Raising the bar is about being the best you can possibly be. It's about not settling for average performance. It's about not even being satisfied about yesterday's performance. It's about taking our level of expectations and raising those each and every day. It's about a standard of excellence, a standard of excellence and a set of demands that you have both on yourself and those around you that allows us to continue to improve our performance and ultimately our results each and every day. Success is peace of mind, which is a direct result of the self-satisfaction in knowing you did your best to become the best you are capable of becoming. Basketball coaching legend John Wooden embodies the very essence of what it means to raise the bar. Under his leadership, the UCLA Bruins won an unprecedented 10 NCAA championships, including seven consecutive victories from 1966 to 1973. Yet, the legend of John Wooden goes far beyond the string of wins and unbroken records compiled during his 40-year coaching career. It is the legacy of a man who was never content to rest on the laurels of his last season or his last win. Not only were John Wooden's teams the best, they were the best over and over again. If you followed John Wooden, you knew how to raise the bar. His story is one of a leader who inspired, motivated, and instilled in his players an understanding of what it meant to succeed by doing their very best. Inside BDHHI, the supply chain organization took the raise the bar attitude to new levels by dramatically improving customer satisfaction through new technologies and vastly decreased lead times. Starting in customer and consumer service, the team focused on increased training and the implementation of new web-based tools. In a short period of time, the department improved from an 80% service level to a 90-95% to service level, putting them in the world-class category. Today, they handle over 1,500 calls per day with less than 50 employees. With tools like eFister and eSelector, customer service reps now have all the order and product information they need at their fingertips. Even better, retail and wholesale customers have access via the web to these same tools, allowing them the capability to self-manage their orders. Eliminating the old process of manually entering data from handwritten or faxed orders also reduces errors and saves hours for both customers and the customer and consumer service department. In addition to introducing new technologies to address our retail and wholesale customers' needs, the team also developed Parts Online to respond to the needs of our end consumers. Parts Online is a web-based tool that asks the consumer a series of questions designed to help identify or troubleshoot a problem, identify models and replacement parts needed, and order the part online without having to call a customer service rep. Taking the idea of raising the bar even further, the customer and consumer service team began to look for creative ways to improve the value of their organization, hence the introduction of inside sales or iSales. The team started by offering other products to customers on the phone after handling their initial requests. This initiative grew to include proactive outbound sales calls to existing customers. The result? An entirely new way of looking at the service business. With this huge paradigm shift, the customer and consumer service team transformed their organization from a cost center to a profit center, generating hundreds of thousands of dollars in incremental sales per month. But the supply chain group didn't stop there. On the demand planning side of the business, the team introduced collaborative planning forecasting and replenishing, or CPFR. In the past, there was no consistent regulated process to share information with customers' logistics specialists. As a result, information was often misrepresented, misinterpreted, or missed entirely as it passed from individual to individual. Now, using the CPFR methodology, BDHHI reps from sales, finance, logistics, inventory, operations, and supply chain meet monthly with key customers to discuss issues such as service levels, carrier compliance, and load optimization. The process has resulted in several benefits. Today, our supply chain team and our customers are focused on common goals, helping to break the cycle of business as usual. A simple scenario helps to illustrate this change. 
In the past, our lead time to ship customer product was 8 to 10 days. This meant that customers lost an entire week of sales with weekends and distribution schedules. Today, we have decreased our lead times to 5 to 7 days, meaning product is in stores ready to sell one weekend earlier. The 98% service level that this change represents not only means significantly improved customer satisfaction, it also means far fewer fines and dramatically improved inventory levels enterprise-wide. Our customers have viewed BDHHI's implementation of the CPFR model so favorably, it is now considered an industry-leading standard for their other suppliers. As the supply chain organization has demonstrated, raising the bar means servicing our customers, setting higher and higher performance standards, never settling for mediocrity, continually improving. Focus is all about priorities. It's about understanding what our priorities are and then implementing against those priorities. It's first things first, second things second. It's realizing that sometimes less is more. It's about understanding what our customers want and then finishing what we start. Perhaps no athlete represents the concept of focus as well as Lance Armstrong. Known as the golden boy of American cycling, after winning 10 titles in 1993, Armstrong was one of the world's best cyclists by age 25. But in 1996, Lance Armstrong hit a hurdle that almost ended his career. He was diagnosed with advanced testicular cancer that had spread and produced a dozen golf ball-sized tumors in his lungs and lesions on his brain. Against all odds, he beat his cancer just one year later. Lance returned to racing in 1998, and it was a slow, tough battle to regain his stamina and technique but his focused determination has become the stuff of legends. Setting his sights on the grueling month-long Tour de France, he crossed the finish line in first place in 1999 and went on to win five additional tours, the only person ever to accomplish this feat. Eight years ago, the employees at the Denison, Texas plant embarked on their own focused journey of health and safety improvements. In 2004, the group's hard work paid off with a highly prestigious OSHA certification in the VPP, or Voluntary Protection Program. In the VPP, management, employees, and OSHA work together to implement comprehensive safety and health management systems. To achieve VPP certification, OSHA assesses applicants' implementation of specific performance-based criteria. Though they had achieved environmental certification through the ISO 14001 program, the Denison team knew that the VPP certification would take a concentrated effort. They had to start with a series of smaller victories before they could qualify for VPP. They mapped out a plan that focused on continuous health and safety improvements, identifying key priorities and the actions necessary for their successful completion. In 1996, they implemented their process improvement plan, combining management leadership, disciplined processes, and employee commitment. First, they ensured that all the baseline compliance programs were in place and operable. This accomplished, the Denison plant conducted self-audits to verify compliance. The team introduced understandable metrics to measure their objectives and to track their progress. And the process worked. In 1997, Denison logged 61 recordable incidents, but by 2003, the number had been reduced to a record-setting 17. In the fall of 2000, the Denison team focused their efforts on a voluntary procedural standard safety program called Occupational Health Safety Assessment Series 18001, and by early 2003, they had achieved OHSAS certification. Now the team felt ready to tackle the rigorous VPP application process. It's uh, very prestigious for a company to become a member of the Voluntary Protection Program. Their employees are more productive. They feel involved. They feel like they have ownership in the program. Companies usually realize that their production goes up. Accidents go down. Money is saved. 
As the result of their tremendous focus and multi-year effort, the Denison plant was awarded VPP certification in 2004. Their focus on health and safety continues to make them a benchmark plant within Black & Decker. Boundarylessness is about teamwork. It's not about self-interest, it's about we, it's about us. It's about breaking down the functional silos. It's about realizing if something's broken, being a part of the solution and fixing that problem. It's realizing that we fail or we succeed together as one, as one team. At 3M Company, technical staff members are encouraged to spend part of their work time on projects of their own choosing. This bootlegging policy has been the catalyst for some of 3M's most famous products, including Post-it Notes. In 1968, staff scientist Spencer Silver discovered a unique, repositionable adhesive. For the next several years, he shopped his adhesive around to other 3M scientists looking for a problem that the adhesive could solve. While singing in his church choir, Art Fry, another 3M scientist, was frustrated with losing his place in his hymnal. He dreamed of a bookmark that would be lightly adhesive. Then he remembered Silver's adhesive. Fry took the initiative to think beyond his immediate job, envisioning the product's potential benefits. He persevered, and in 1977, Post-it Notes were born. Today, there are more than 600 Post-it Note products sold in more than 100 countries. Black & Decker Hardware and Home Improvement Group's acquisition of Baldwin and Weiser would not have succeeded without similar boundarylessness. At $275 million, the Baldwin and Weiser acquisition was Black & Decker's largest acquisition in 14 years, and it offered a fantastic opportunity to gain two incredibly powerful brand names. Unlike traditional due diligence teams that typically include only legal and finance representatives, BDHHI assembled a team of over 20 employees from throughout the organization to gain a thorough understanding of both companies. The due diligence team assembled in Baldwin's Reading, Pennsylvania headquarters and Weiser's Tucson and Nogales locations for a week each. Team members walked the facilities, interviewed employees, and delved into the intricate functional details of each company's operations. The team then met several times each day to share what they had learned. To manage the wealth of information they were collecting and to consolidate the efforts of so many involved individuals, the team used an integrated software package designed specifically for the real-time sharing of information surrounding potential acquisitions. The software was a key enabler to boundarylessness, allowing the team to flag and prioritize critical issues, assign task owners and timelines, and generate summary reporting for senior management. A major benefit of having a cross-functional due diligence team was the head start that their information provided as Baldwin and Wiser processes were integrated into the BDHHI culture. Equally important, the due diligence team was able to identify best practices from both Baldwin and Wiser that could be implemented within BDHHI. Throughout the process, the team members also developed valuable relationships with employees in other parts of the BDHHI organization that they wouldn't normally work with. In a business environment in which most acquisitions fail to meet initial objectives, the team's boundarylessness approach was pivotal. Black & Decker's acquisition of Baldwin and Weiser met or exceeded all key performance objectives and helped fuel Wall Street confidence in our corporation's ability to execute a far larger $1 billion deal with Pentair. Within the BDHHI business, the success of the Baldwin and Wiser integration is evident as we grow together as one team for leadership brands.